Hi, my name is Laura and I own Brightly Art Studio in Brownsburg, Indiana. And I wanted to share with you today three of my favorite art books that I'm loving right now. I've used them in the art studio and in my classroom and at home with my own children for a long time. And they're just three of my favorites. And I thought if you're looking to add art books to your child's library, these would be three really great ones to add. So to start us off, I'm going to start with the book Mix It Up by Hervé Toulé. I love his name. Uh, this is a really great interactive book. And you might think, oh, it's meant for preschoolers. But no, no. My older children love it. Kids of all ages love it. And a good interactive book is always fun. So what I love about this book is I love how imperfect the illustrations are. It, um, the way he illustrated and added the pictures in this book, it really shows how art can really change and move. And it looks like wet paint. So it is a great uh, book on introducing primary colors and coloring mix it. He has created a game out of it where there's a little bit of magic uh, and a lot of touching. So this book has a lot of fun interactive pages that kids of all ages like. And it's very, very wonderful for learning how to um, use the primary colors to create all the colors of the rainbow. So it's a lot of fun and I highly, highly re recommend this book. This one's probably my favorite for reading aloud to preschoolers um, and older kids alike. So Mix It Up by Hervé Toulé. And you really can't go wrong with any of his books. His books are all amazing and they're all, um, they're all wonderful. And he has a lot of really fun interactive books. Say Zoop is also a fun favorite of mine. Then the next book I have is Never Let a Unicorn Scribbled by Diane Alber. She has a whole series of books that um, it's from the point of view of a child and uh, they go through a lot of things that adults teach kids um, like don't scribble on your paper or don't eat a crayon or you know a lot of things that you tell your kids not to do it's from her perspective telling a unicorn or there's a dinosaur one um, there's a or a, there's a never let a princess paint but basically it talks about this one why i love it specifically is it's talking the little girl is telling the unicorn that you're not allowed to scribble but of course unicorns don't know how to draw and so it's um it's her realizing that a unicorn has to scribble because all kids start, all artists learn somewhere. And it's great. It reminds you as the adult that scribbling is not a bad thing. Um, a lot of really great fun artwork is made by scribbling. And sometimes it's fun to make artwork just because it's fun. And uh, scribbling is part of that process. So it's really funny. The, uh, let me show you some of the facial expressions. Um, the kids just love it. Look at this. She's very frustrated. And then the unicorn's laughing. But anyway, I just love this book. Um, this one is my favorite out of her whole series. Never let a unicorn scribble. And then the next book that I really, really, really love. This one is great for older children. This is great uh, for kids that are starting to get into the everything has to be perfect. Um, phase of making artwork, um, which is a, unfortunately where a lot of kids get stuck and then that's when they decide they are not a good artist. So this book is called The Book of Mistakes and it is by Karina Lukin. So this book is The Book of Mistakes and basically it is, there's not many words to this book, but it starts off with a drip of paint and then it talks about how you can pivot in your artwork and how you don't have to start over or crumple up your paper. You just make changes and you go with the flow. Something that I teach over and over again in the art classes at Brightly is how to take something that happened in your artwork um, that wasn't what you were planning on doing and how to make it into something that you love. So you don't, I don't want kids to start over all the time or crumple up their paper or feel frustrated a lot. We talk about big frustrations and little frustrations a lot and that little frustrations are part of being an artist because sometimes like in this illustration, one eye is bigger than the other. So what could she do 
to make it better. She says, making the other eye even bigger was another mistake. So she made a change and she didn't love it. Again, what can happen? But the glasses, they were a good idea. So seeing how you can take two mistakes and turn them into a good idea. And she does that throughout the entire drawing and the drawing gets bigger and bigger. Oh, you just probably saw <laughs> until at the end, she has this really huge, intricate, fun drawing that's basically a bunch of mistakes of things that she messed up and was able to pivot, change her mind and go with. So I love reading this book aloud to older artists because of that reason. A lot of us get stuck in that everything needs to be perfect phase of being an artist. And that is not where the freedom is. That's not where the joy is. Joy is not, there is, there is little joy in perfection in most cases in art. And so it's able to uh, see, it is for what it could be, not for what it is, and make changes. So little kids also love this book. The illustrations are beautiful, but this is my go-to for, for um, middle-aged kids. Those are three books that I'm loving. I have a whole case of books, of a lot of books that I love, but those are my top three. And so I thought sharing, with you, sharing those with you might be a fun way to end the week and give you some ideas of books if you're looking to add to your artist's uh, home library that I, your local art lady, would recommend. Bye, have a great weekend, and I'll see you at the studio soon. Bye.